to introduce myself first, my name is Duncan Martin. Uh, I've been involved in the project since 2002. Uh, and as a chemical engineer and former lecturer in engineering, uh, I fairly naturally got drawn into the design and uh, implementation of the heating system at a fairly early stage. So where we are now is uh, in, the, in the fuel store for the district heating plant. Um, the fuel we're burning is wood chip. You can see it's just uh, um, coarsely chopped up um, scrap waste wood from a sawmill. using is coming from a sawmill uh, at Ballina Slow, which is about 50 kilometres north of here. That's further than one would aim to transport um, wood chip. It's obviously bulky stuff and fairly uh, high, heavy to carry. Um, but we have a very good quality supplier. There's not that many suppliers yet in Ireland. It's a, it's a growing business uh, and we are really, um, the, the quality angle is, is really important because one of the things you don't want is fuel with pieces of metal in or rock or God knows what, or oversized pieces which block up the feed system because if the feed system gets blocked, somebody's got to dig all that out and get in and unblock it. We've never had to do it and we wouldn't like to have to do it, so quality is important. But in the long run, our intention is to get into contracts with local farmers to plant coppiced willow uh, and produce the stuff locally. So what we're looking at is 500 kilowatts of um, power output from burning wood chip. We have two of these boilers, one normally runs, one's on standby, um, they're completely automatic. Okay, so what we have here is the central plant room for the district heating system. So what we're looking at on my left here, this is the back end of boiler one, and this square box here with the fan on top is cyclone. That takes all the soot, or virtually all the soot out of the flue gases. That's one of the big advantages of having a central plant like this rather than every house having a smoky old stove. So there's virtually no smoke produced, despite 500 kilowatts of output. Um, the other boiler is at the other end of the building. The pumps that distribute the um, hot water to the houses are, are here. There's one, the green ones. So there would normally be one running one on standby, which is the case at the moment. And you can see at the moment the water is going out at about 70 degrees, coming back at about 58. And then we've got uh, 500 square meters of solar uh, just above here. Uh, that comes in to these pipes here and that heat exchanger there. Um, so that's a very compact little unit which, will, which is capable of uh, uh, transferring several hundred kilowatts of heat uh, into the um, buffer tank which we looked at a few minutes ago. Um, because the circuit going around the um, solar field has glycol in, uh, has to for, for antifreeze, so it's a separate circuit from the one going around the rest of the site. That's why the heat exchanger is. Uh, not much else to point out really, just a lot of valves and stuff, apart from the fact there's obviously heat meters. Here's one uh, measuring the amount of heat produced, there's one on each boiler, and then this one is measuring the amount of heat which is uh, sent out to the district. So what you've got here, the, the red thing here is actually simply a water meter measuring the amount of water flowing through the circuit. And then there's a thermocouple on this pipe and on that pipe which measures the temperatures. And those three bits of data are all fed into a little grey box here. Uh, which reads out uh, the kilowatt hours, the kilowatts, and a whole load of other uh, useful bits of information. And the heat is metered in each household? And the heat is metered in each house by exactly the same method. The only difference is that the, uh, the flow meter is much, much smaller. It's about the size of a small can of baked beans. And what do people pay for their heat? 3.5 cents per kilowatt hour. How does that uh, compare to uh, other sources of heat? Oil now is about nine cents a kilowatt hour. Uh, electricity, well, nobody who would heat their house with electricity, but just for comparison, electricity in Ireland is about 70, 18 cents a kilowatt hour now. So, um, what you've heard just going quiet there is that it's 10 past, 20 past 10, so the pumps have just shut down after their morning run. And they will come on again at this, this evening. So we, we, we deliver heat twice a day. Uh, in each house, uh, there's a heat meter as we were just saying and then the heat is fed into, uh, hot water is fed into a, an 800 litre buffer tank in each house. 
So that provides you the reserve of heat in the house from which the householder then delivers heat around the house, whether by radiators, underfloor heating, in wall heating, or whatever they've chosen. Oh, uh, so that gives the householder uh, virtual independence from what actually happens up here in the plant. So we can deliver heat here at the times it's most efficient to do it, um, and uh, the householder gets the heat as and when he or she wants it. So they control the temperatures. They, they're, they're, the storage tank in their house effectively works like a gas boiler or an oil boiler as far as the householder is concerned. Rather than burning fuel to create heat, they switch on a pump to get heat. Uh okay, so let me just establish some of the basics about the design concept behind our district heating system because a lot of people look at the technology we've got installed here and they say the reaction of some people is, well, that's not very how I would see an eco-village. Some people see an eco-village as somewhere where all the technology is very simple, uh, stuff we could maintain ourselves, stuff we could build ourselves if we had to, uh, and that's certainly a very good, sustainable way to design an eco-village. But it depends really what the objective of your eco-village is, and some eco-villages I think are conceived as um, refuges from economic collapse or Armageddon in the future or heaven knows what. Uh, Ours, on the other hand, is very much seen as attempting to create an alternative model for future development in the island of Ireland and elsewhere. Um, so we're trying to do something which presents models which conventional developers could quite easily follow. And there's no reason why a system like we've put in here couldn't go into any substantial housing estate.